You are Locked On Syracuse, your daily podcast on the Syracuse Orange, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so we're going to continue our discussion now that Chance Westry is fully healthy for next season with looking at the guard rotation on this team for next year we're talking about Syracuse basketball once again I know we're 20 days away from football season but we got to interrupt our football coverage because there was breaking news with basketball and that is that Chance Westry is healthy so let's look at the guards there are currently six of them on the roster and I don't think that's going to change I don't think that Syracuse is going to bring anyone else in I don't. I don't think they're going to bring in another transfer or anything like that. So the roster as is is probably going to stick. The six guards on the roster currently, J.J. Starling, who is a holdover, J. Quan Carlos, the transfer from Hofstra. You got Chance Westry, obviously. Elijah Moore is the four-star recruit coming in. And then you have Lucas Taylor, a Georgia State transfer. And rounding out the group, last but not least, Kyle Cuff, another holdover. So, with Westry healthy, we already projected that he was going to be in the guard rotation. But now that he's healthy, you can officially pencil him in as a guard. And the guard rotation is certainly deeper. You got six guards. And you got three of which that are capable of playing point guard. Jaquan Carlos can play point guard. He led his conference in assists last season. Albeit it was at Hofstra, but still he was a four-star transfer who was one of the best passers in the portal this offseason. You also have J.J. Starling, who was a five-star point guard out of high school. Now, I know he hasn't played a lot of point guard in college, but we do know that he is capable of playing that position. And then you have Chance Westry. Chance Westry is capable of playing the point guard. He is six foot six, so he's also capable of playing the three. I'm going to discuss that with the forward rotation, but he's capable of playing one through three at six foot six, but he's got excellent court vision according to his teammates. Stouts out of high school said that he had great court vision. He can defend at a high level. So overall, he's capable of playing point guard too. Then you have three, even four shooting guards, right? Elijah Moore. I, I, wait, I'm leaving out another point guard here. Kyle Cuff. Kyle Cuff is a point guard, defensive point guard. You know what I mean. Defensive situations. That's when you can really use Kyle Cuff. Then you have two to three shooting guards, depending on what you want to play or where you want to play J.J. Starling for next season. You got Elijah Moore, obviously, the four-star recruit. It's going to depend on whether he's hitting a shot next season or if he's going to play or not. You have Lucas Taylor, the Georgia State transfer, who can provide a little bit of shooting as well, who led his team in scoring last year. And then, of course, Starling, who was the starting shooting guard last year for this team. Now, assuming that Chance Westry is a good camp. Remember, we know he's healthy, but now we got to see if he's actually going to perform. Let's say he does perform. All right, I'm feeling optimistic on this Sunday afternoon. Let's say he does perform. I would start Chance Westry at point guard. I would. And this is a change from a couple weeks ago. If you recall, I did a Poll Friday episode where... I explained that Jaquan Carlos should be the starting point guard in part because I didn't know if Chance Westry was actually healthy. Well, now we know he's healthy. So he has a good camp. I would play Chance Westry at the one, which would allow J.J. Starling to stay at the two, where he was very, very effective at, especially in the second half of last season. I think it would be great. The all-upside lineup for this team is Chance Westry as the point guard, J.J. Starling at the two, Bell at the three, Freeman at the four, and Lampkin at the five. That is a really, really good starting lineup. If Chance Westry can perform. We know that Starling is good. We know what Chris Bell is. We also know what he isn't. Donnie Freeman is, I don't know, only the best Syracuse recruit since Carmelo Anthony, and that's not hyperbole. We also know what Eddie Lampkin is, a very, very solid, capable starting center in a Power 5 conference. Last year at Colorado, we had 10-7. and The all-upside lineup has Chance Westry 
as the starting point guard. Here's why it's also ideal. We're going to circle it back to the guard rotation here. It allows Jay Quan Carlos to be the backup point guard, which I think is best suited for him. It's not to say that he can't start, especially as a spot starter, but do I really feel comfortable being him being a, a full-time starter? As of right now, no. I would just have to really see it over the course of the season. But for right now, while it was the safest option a couple of weeks ago, it still wasn't the best option. It's not the best option anymore. I think it's Chance Westry. Carlos as the backup point guard, got no problem with that whatsoever. I think that's really, really solid. He can also defend at a high level as well as pass. It allows Elijah Moore to develop. Develop. I know we're all excited to see Elijah Moore, and I'm not calling him a bad player or anything like that, but this team is deeper than what it was last season. And there's a lot of guards on the roster, guards with a lot of experience as well. So unless Elijah Moore is so good that Syracuse is forced to play him, they don't have to play him. Honestly, if I were to make a cross sport rep or a cross sport comparison here, I would say it's almost like Jamie Tremble at tight end. If you recall or if you remember, whatever, Jamie Tremble is a four star tight end prospect for Syracuse football this upcoming season. But he doesn't really have to play unless they have to, they, he doesn't have to play, right? You got a Ronde Gadsden, you got Dan Villar, and you got Max May. So you don't have to play Jamie Tremble. It's kind of similar with Elijah Moore, although in basketball, you can get on the floor right away compared to football where even the best true freshmen aren't playing in year one. But that's kind of the cross-sport comparison I wanted to make where unless Elijah Moore is such a standout right away, you don't have to play him because they have enough guards in the rotation, especially with Chance Westry healthy. I think Lucas Taylor can still provide good depth at the guard position. I think... Kyle Cuff, while he does have his limitations, he could still provide good defense in late half, late game situations. Overall, I'm just really excited that Chance Westry is healthy because the possibilities for this team are endless. But I would say since he is healthy and assuming that he has a good camp, I would start him at point guard with J.J. Starling at the two. So it creates the all-upside lineup for this team next season.